Welcome back to What Are You Noobs with Jagger of Disturbance. This is the Object 261, it's the Tier 10 Soviet SVG. This one's located on the north spawn of Prokhorovka and it's under the command of Yarbas of Olim. And he sent us another game in featuring the RT that, well, a lot of people seem to like, myself included actually, because it's so much fun to play. Game on! You have a good chance of running out of ammunition in this RT. It only carries 20 rounds, it should carry a lot more, because after all, it is a tier 10 RT. The same is true of the T92 HMC, you only get 16 rounds of ammunition in that one. Now, what's he doing here? He's doing a box, okay, he's gonna lure the enemy into shooting at that bush after he knocked it down, but he's gonna go a bit further back. Okay, he's being sneaky. Lining it up, that looks about right. Okay, enemy tank's been spotted out in the field. A T100 LT did a quick scouting run through the bowl, and now we've got a 1 to 1. Line up headed path, rounds out, direct! Oh no, it didn't hit! I thought for a second that was going to be a direct hit. In fact, I felt certain it was going to be a direct hit, but it wasn't. But he's relocated to avoid counter battery. Now, this is the RT based on the IS 7 didn't get built because the IS-7 wasn't continued. I'm afraid Stalin didn't want any more heavy tanks after he'd started or approved the production of the IS-3. I guess you could say that the Soviets were heavy tanked out. They just had so many of them that they couldn't build any more, even if the IS-7 happened to be a very, very good tank. Lovely shot into the side of the A phase one for 274. Change of position again. Now it's 800 Alpha, 45 millimeters of pin, 9.5 meters on the blast radius, between 11 and a half and 29 seconds of stun. I guess at this level, 45 millimeters of pin is also very, very good. But so is the reload speed as well. Rounds out. Just alongside him on that one. Damage the tracks, but not much else. The standard reload is 30.68 seconds. But you can see here, Yarbas has got it down to 24.85. And enemy RT is firing in his general direction. Well, good job that he didn't move forward. He actually moved back and the GW only splashed him. But it is an indication that the enemy knows where he is and it might be a good idea for him to re, um, move his shot together. Oh, what a shot! He just got the kill on the Leopard prototype. Okay, he's lining himself up. Still going to attack the hill. Plenty of tanks up there for him to aim at, and most of them moving fairly slowly. The Shaft UG4 would be my uh, preference because it's got thin armor. He is a four-shot autoloader as well. He'll pull back a long way once he's into the reload. Over here. Well, that looks to be a 1-2-1. One, one with a nice uh, shiny um, skin on it. Ramsack. Direct hit. 285. Now, he fired that where he did to pull back again, just in case that GW tries it on. Two marks on that 140. He's obviously trying to shoot at our guys up the hill. He really disturbed that. Rounds out. Looks like it landed alongside him. And he's now using the full length of these bushes to get shot at the enemy. There's only one RT on either team. So if we did change position, the enemy would look for the usual positions to see where he is. Okay, Progetto is actually coming over the rise there, trying to get it out, guys. I guess he's actually trying to get proximity so he can get spotting assist of the Kanoni Jagdpanzer, who took a hit there. And there's the Progetto again. 
Okay, he's loaded. Sharp YouTube. Okay, there we go. That's the one you want to hit. Thin armor, so it's likely to get you hits. Oh, he was just too quick. He was so fast. Okay, he's still there. Our Ryan Arnie got trapped, and now he's out, but we might be able to get a shot on the Progetto. Bounce out. Oh, yes, he got him. Nice kill. So that's two now. That 140 is also looking very, very tasty. He's harassing our ELCs very, very low on hit points, and he does get the kill, and he goes down. As well to our Kanoni Jagdpanzer 105. I'm wounded. Oh, we got another kill! A blind kill on the Selma! And that's given him the communications expert skill as well. That's kicked in for the amount of assist he got. 846 from his stun assist. One, two, one, still harassing our guys. It's a very narrow arc of fire. It's only five degrees either side of the center line, 10 degrees in total. But it actually, with the new skills, this RT can dial in very, very quickly on the enemy. If you've got all the skills working, you can hit, keep the thing almost permanently dialed in. Almost, not quite. Here's the one, two, one. Oh, well, that's pretty final. And it's the Centurion Action 10 that got the kill shot. Tier 10 game with tier 8 tanks. The A Phase 1 just took a hit. Wait for it. There. Bounce out. Direct hit, 241. You can see the design to this uh, this RT is very, very similar to the Object 263 because they actually share the same family. The GW, uh, GWE 900 was making its way to the bushes and we might be able to get a hit. Looks like our guys are pressuring them at the other end and that's why he tried to get away. Yag Tiger rounds out. There could be a kill. Oh, it is! I'm not sure if he ricocheted the shell off the wreck and into the Yag Tiger, or it hit the wreck, blew up, and then took the Yag Tiger with it. That was pretty amazing. Because uh, he got the twang and he got the kill. Okay, Sharky Chur goes down, makes a bad decision. There's only two enemy left. The GWE 900 is probably in that corner hiding from our shells. In fact, he's not. He's staying out in the open. Rounds out. That's a kill. That's his fifth. If he can get the last kill, which is the A phase one, he would get a top gun. It's not guaranteed, though, because he's having to sit behind the rock to stop the enemy fire coming in. And we're still reloading. He pokes out to, to take a look. Rounds out. Oh, so close, but it tracked him. But he's fixed his tracks, and that's it. That's the end of the game. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the first class tank for Yarbas of Olymp in the Object 261. He managed to get a fighter badge for getting at least four kills. In fact, he got five this time, which is one more than the base map from Hell managed to get. He also got a Brewster medal for getting at least five critical hits in this game. He managed to get eight. And his winning from this one was 3,484. Not quite as high as the base man. Uh, but yes, he did get a very, very good game. And he looked like he was on for a top gun. But unfortunately, that A phase one moved out of the way just to avoid that shell. I'm not sure it was actually deliberately to do that. But at uh, the wrong moment, he moved and so... Yarbas ended up not getting the top gun, but at least he got one third of the enemy team.
If you look at team score, we can see the highest damage in that game actually went to the Centurion Action 10 with 3,545. There was another Centurion Action 10 in that game who got 3,081 in second place. And in third place, it was Yalbas with 3,050 hit points. And when it came to kills, we can see the high scorer was Yalbas. Five kills to him, two kills to the Centurion Action 10s apiece. The TS-60 and the Unis-03 all got two, and nobody on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill. And when it came to base XP, he's in third place because the Centurion Action 10 got 915, the Unis-03 got 910, and then we've got Yarbas getting 880 there. So um, he got uh, third place on damage, third place on base XP, and top place when it came to number of kills. He fired 15 rounds, so still had five rounds spare at the end of the game. Got five direct hits on the enemy and one penetrating shot, 14 splashes. Now, which one do we think that he actually penetrated? I think it probably would have been the GWE 100. And it wasn't. That's a shock. How about the Selma? Yes, the Selma. That was in the bushes when he hit it, so we couldn't see it at the time. But it did get hit and it came out as a wreck. It suddenly appeared as a wreck. 370 hit points from one penetrating shot. That's useful to know because Selmas obviously do have very thin armor on the front, which means that we can penetrate them with RT rounds. He also got 3,050, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damaged eight of the enemy. Oh, he got hit by one splash. That was the GWE 100. And he did lose a few hit points, but not much. Uh, and he did um, damage eight of the enemy, killed five, and got 869 hit points of stun assist off 10 stuns. On a premium count, he actually made a loss of 2,688 credits, um, mainly down to, I think, to the auto resupply of consumables, because he had to pay full price for those. And he also got seven bonds and 1,320 experience points out of it. So I guess he actually saved to a certain extent from the fact that he um, didn't uh, have to fire all of his shells, which the base man did, or nearly all of his shells, um, and then got us about the same amount of profit. Um, but it's in this case, it is the consumables that cost uh, so much. But seven bonds and 1,320 experience points is good as well. So, two different games in the 261, same machine, but uh, getting a slightly different result. Both players got a first class, and it's only really the base man who ended up with four kills, but he did get a counter battery by medal for taking out both enemy SPGs in the end. And of course, his team won by capping out, uh, well, not by capping out, by, um, uh, by forcing the enemy to reveal himself to his teammate, the Manticore, who got the Faden's medal by taking out the last enemy with his last shell. And if he hadn't have done it, then the base man would have done it by shooting his last shell at the enemy instead. But uh, both very interesting games. And I also like the way that Yarbas made the full use of that strip of land, um, the, the set of bushes. He was moving backwards and forwards. And it's good that he did drive backwards when the, the GW fired. Otherwise, he might have walk straight into a shell from the enemy i hope you enjoyed that replay if you did please give this video a like do subscribe to our channel leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm and thank you for watching